Today we will be learning about assembly lines, why they were invented, where they are used, how they are designed, and what roles engineers play to improve them. The photo on the left depicts an assembly line used to manufacture automobiles in the early 1900s. On the right is a present day assembly line. As you can see, many changes were made along the way. What is an assembly line? An assembly line is a series of workstations along a connected system that moves materials. Parts are added to the product in an ordered manner to create a finished product. Assembly lines are used for the mass production of products. Industrial engineers are responsible for the design of assembly lines based on product size and the demands of consumers. How does an assembly line work? People are assigned to each station with a specific task to be completed. As the unfinished product reaches them, they perform their assigned task by adding the necessary parts. This process continues until the assembly of the product is complete. Many of you have seen assembly lines in action in your everyday lives, even though you may not have realized what they were called. Think about some restaurants that may use assembly lines. Have any of you ever been to Subway? When ordering your sub, you're first asked what type of bread you want. That employee cuts the bread and passes it along the counter to the next employee, who then adds your meats and cheeses and passes it along to the next employee. That person adds your vegetables and passes it along. The last employee at the counter tops your sandwich with dressings and wraps it up. So it all begins with an unfinished product that moves along a connected system of workstations where certain tasks are assigned. In the end, you have a finished product, your sub. Another example where a type of assembly line is used is at Build-A-Bear. You start with an unstuffed animal, move it along to the next station where you choose a heart for it, and fill it with stuffing at the following station. Once it's stuffed, you sew it up and bring it to the bathing station. After you've brushed and bathed it, you choose an outfit for your new animal, and then approach the final station where you make a birth certificate for it. Again, it starts with an unfinished product, moves along from station to station, until a finished product is complete at the end. The first idea of an assembly line was introduced in the 1890s by Ransom E. Olds. He used it to mass produce Oldsmobile cars, which are no longer made. In 1909, it took 12 and a half hours to produce the Ford Model T car. This is called cycle time, the amount of time it takes to complete one product from start to finish on an assembly line. In 1913, Henry Ford significantly improved the assembly line by adding a conveyor system to it. By doing so, he was able to reduce the cycle time to 1.5 hours. Improvements continued, and in 1927, a Model T was produced every 24 seconds using multiple assembly lines. This is called throughput, the rate at which finished products come off a line. There are many ways the product is moved from station to station on an assembly line. Products can be moved using human power, as was done in the very first assembly line created by Ransom E. Olds. Conveyor belts, like at checkout counters at grocery stores, are often used, as Henry Ford introduced in the early 1900s. And if products are too big or too heavy, forklifts are used to move them, as the one shown in the picture to the right of the screen. There are two types of assembly lines, dry and wet. On a dry line, no partially completed products appear at each station at the beginning of a run. As you can see from the picture, the belt is empty. So when workers get to their stations, they must wait for products to arrive from the stations before them in order to begin their tasks. On a wet assembly line, partially finished products are already at each station when workers arrive. There is no wait time for them at the beginning of their shifts. They can begin their tasks as soon as they get there. Wet assembly lines are used at most manufacturing companies today. You are about to watch a video clip of an assembly line from an old TV show called I Love Lucy. Pay attention to things that are going wrong on the line and think about what might be done to improve it. What are you doing up here? I thought you were downstairs boxing chocolates. Oh, they kicked me out of there fast. Why? I kept pinching them to see what kind they were. <laughs> this is the fourth department I've been in. Oh. Oh, I didn't do so well either. No. All right, girls. Now, this is your last chance. 
If one piece of candy gets past you and into the packing room unwrapped, you're fired. Yes, ma'am. Let her roll! <laughs> to wrap the chocolates as they came through the line. The chocolates were coming in at a much faster pace than Lucy and Ethel could keep up with. Because of that, some chocolates were passing by unwrapped, and even the ones they wrapped weren't done so in an effective manner. One way to improve this line would be to slow down the conveyor belt to allow more time for wrapping the chocolates. Another option may be to add another worker at the station to give Lucy and Ethel a hand at keeping up. When designed and utilized correctly, assembly lines are beneficial for manufacturing companies. Why do you think so? It takes less time to produce an item manufactured on an assembly line compared to one operator performing all of the tasks on his own. And it costs less to produce the product since they are made faster. The quality of the product is also improved when manufacturing on an assembly line. In today's lesson, we are going to evaluate the production of skateboards manufactured on an assembly line in the Toyota Production Systems Lab at the Rochester Institute of Technology.